Hi, I'm Dr Kim Clue, Publishing Manager for the Royal Astronomical Society's Journals. Welcome to our celebration of 100 years of publishing geophysics. This started off in 1922 with a single paper, and now we publish around 600 papers a year in our journal, Geophysical Journal International. Papers by scientists from all over the world. I hope you enjoy these stories we have to tell. In today's story, we find out how our journal began. I'm Dr. Sue Bowler, and I edit the membership magazine of the Royal Astronomical Society, getting contributions from fellows in astronomy, but especially in geophysics. Well, in the Royal Astronomical Society, we had two uh, very important people in geophysics in the 20th century. We had Herbert Hall Turner, H.H. H. Turner, um, and Harold Jeffries. Turner was an astronomer and a mathematician. Uh, he had started his career uh, as an observational astronomer, and he really grasped in the 1880s, the cutting edge technology of the time, which was photography. Uh, and he did a lot of work on astrophotography uh, and all the things that, made, that it made possible. So locating stars with respect to each other, he did a lot of work on variable stars. Um, but he was interested in everything, as far as I can tell. He was, he was a very, um, gregarious, charming man, but he particularly got interested in all this data coming from the interior of the earth. Harold Jeffries was slightly different. He too was a mathematician uh, and a physicist. He was very interested in fluid dynamics, but he, he wanted to know everything about the earth. He wanted to know its physical properties. In fact, he wrote the book. Uh, he wrote a book entitled The Earth, Its Origin, History and Physical Constitution, uh, which remained in print until 1976. So it was quite a master tome. And he was interested in seismology for what information it could give him about the physical nature of the inside of the Earth. Seismology was very much a growing science in, uh, at the end of the 19th century and early in the 20th century. Seismometers, instruments to measure how much the vibrations of an earthquake are felt at a particular point on the earth, were beginning to be set up worldwide. Now, there were two people in the Royal Astronomical Society who were instrumental in getting this new field recognized uh, in the form of a new publication. The first one was Herbert Hall Turner, H.H. H. Turner, uh, and the second, Harold Jeffries. Turner was a mathematician and an astronomer. He was an observer, uh, both of the stars and of interesting phenomena associated with the Earth. And so he was interested in seismology as a new source of data about the Earth. Harold Jeffries came to seismology for slightly different reasons. He was a theoretician, a physicist, uh, and he was interested in everything about the interior of the Earth. Uh, and he too fell on seismology as a way to get data. Turner was a very interesting person. Um, his work on astrophotography reminds us just how new a technology that was, because one of the great difficulties was relating the positions of stars on a photographic plate, which of course at that time was a glass plate, to their actual positions in the sky. And Turner did some clever mathematical modeling and measuring that allowed somebody measuring distances on a plate to translate that into 
where the stars were in the sky. That, that was very important because the late 19th century saw the first effort to make a full photographic catalogue of the sky with very accurate positions for all the stars. Uh, and he contributed to that in his position at Oxford. He also accidentally discovered a variable star. This was another benefit of having photographic plates because you could take one picture of a star field on one date and take another one sometime later. Uh, and if a star had changed brightness, it was very obvious. Another aspect of, of Turner's life and work that I find uh, very appealing and I uh, respect him very greatly for was his approach to women in science. There were very few women in science at, at this time, but Turner respected them, treated them as scientists, as, as he would any other scientist. For example, a lot of his work on variable stars he did with Mary Blagg, who was one of the first women to be admitted to fellowship of the RAS in 1916. Uh, there's a wonderful obituary of him written by Annie Cannon, Annie Jump Cannon, who was one of the Harvard observers who defined the spectral classification system of stars. And she writes about him as a friend, a respected fellow scientist, and it's quite clear that the respect is mutual. Uh, I find that very admirable. Turner also made a big contribution towards astronomy in naming the Parsec in 1913. It's related to the difference in parallax between two objects. It's a parallax of one second. So, Parsec. At the start of the 20th century, seismologists were setting up seismological stations, places with seismometers all around the world and measuring the time that the vibrations from an earthquake reached different stations. This allowed them to locate the source of the earthquake by looking at the stations that received the signal first. They must be closest to that source. And at the time, they had a, a model for how earthquakes originated. And the key point about that model was that earthquakes were shallow features. They formed underground, but not very deep. Turner was looking at this increasing amount of data from seismic stations all around the world. And he hit upon a problem. He noted that for some earthquakes, this model didn't fit. It was fine for the stations that were very close to the source of the earthquake. But if you looked at stations on the far side of planet Earth, didn't, it didn't work at all. It, it didn't make sense. Um, so Turner proposed a new model. He agreed that most earthquakes were shallow in origin, but some of them, he said, were deep, perhaps 250 miles deep into the earth. This was a new idea. It was a new concept. And these deep earthquakes were going to prove to be very useful in understanding the deeper structure of the earth. Well, the RAS were responding to pressure from their fellows. By 1917 and 1918, they were getting significant interest from fellows that they thought it was important to recognize this new field, geophysics. Uh, and they did so by setting up a separate journal, initially as a supplement to monthly notices. But it recognized the importance of this field to their fellows so that fellows could publish their research, have it recognized. And of course, the society wanted to encourage research in that field. It's actually just the same as uh, we have recently done in the RAS in launching a new journal about techniques and instruments. RASTI, as we call it, 
uh, recognizes the whole field of data science, software development, all these growing areas. And that's what the RAS did for geophysics 100 years ago. And H.H. Turner's paper on deep earthquakes was the first paper published in the first issue of the Geophysical Supplement to Monthly Notices in 1922. It's that independent publication that is now Geophysical Journal International. In 1922, that's when the RAS started to publish geophysics research independently from astronomy. Both Jeffries and Turner were strong supporters of the new journal. They published prolifically in it uh, and also in monthly notices at the same time. The journal has evolved in the last hundred years, but one thing I like very much about it is that the cover has stayed the same color. When the journal started to be published, it was specified that the color should be, the color of the cover should be a green that would not readily fade. And that's something we've kept right up to the present day with the green cover of Geophysical Journal International. The seismometers that were used in the early part of the 20th century were actually really quite simple instruments. So simple, in fact, that you could build one out of Lego. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Sheila Kanani, and I'm the Education, Outreach and Diversity Officer at the Royal Astronomical Society. Today, I'm going to show you something called Lego seismometers. Here we have the Lego seismometer. As you can see, it's constructed with Lego. Here we have the electromagnet, so a magnet and a coil of wire. And here we have the hinge. And here the electromagnet is connected to a computer. So what we have to do to get it to work is to put it on a stable surface and then use this counterweight to balance the magnet so it is floating just inside the coil of wire. Ooh, there we go. Now. What the seismometer does is detect vibrations. So if I tap the desk like this, the magnet will wobble up and down inside the coil, inducing an electrical current. And then the wire feeds the electrical signal to a program on our computers, which means we can visualize the vibrations as sound waves. You can use any kind of software that will do this. But for our project, we use the software called Audacity and that changes the electrical signals into sound waves that we can visualize. So the seismometer picks up small vibrations. Or big ones. Making the magnet bob up and down inside the coil, inducing electrical signal which is then converted to a visual sound wave that we can see using a program on our computers. This electrical signal showing the vibrations is what we call the seismogram. And the whole contraption is the seismograph, and this portion is the seismometer. There's a primary school called Hazel Primary School in Leicester, UK, which is situated near Leicester City Football Ground. Hazel Primary have got a Lego seismometer in one of the classrooms and they noticed something interesting was happening. During match days, the seismograph was picking up very interesting vibrations. Why was this happening? Well, the vibrations that were being picked up were being caused by tens of thousands of people jumping up and down, cheering and clapping whenever Leicester City scored a goal. Goal! <laughs> It's vibrations like these that travel in similar ways to earthquakes in what we call waves. So seismometers like these can be used to detect and measure the strength of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and explosions. Why don't you make your own, Lego or otherwise? 
This Lego seismometer was created as part of the British Geological Survey's school seismometer project and was used as part of the Royal Astronomical Society's RS200 National Youth Agency's Geophysics in a Box project. <laughs> 